Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Jamaica News in Review. Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Doors and windows of some mobile businesses smashed. A woman believed to be of unsound man allegedly used stones and other implements to smash the window and doors of several businesses in downtown Montego Bay, St. James, early Sunday morning. Many of the stores are located along St. James, Market and Fort Streets. The Saba Art Gallery, Nela Stationery and Art Supply, and the office that opposition Senator Janice Allen share with her sister, attorney at law Nicole Allen, were affected. At least nine large planes of glasses were damaged at a different storefront on Fort Street. The preliminary estimate cost at the gallery so far is about $300,000. Maintenance manager at the Victory Building found a heavy crash bar he believes was used to break the window and door the facility on Fort Street. Businessman murdered, wife injured in Grand Spend shooting. A 53-year-old businessman was shot dead and his wife injured during an attack on Sunday morning at their restaurant in Grand Spend St. Andrew. The deceased was identified as Peter Green. The two, who also own the commercial complex on which the restaurant is located, was reportedly preparing meals when two men rode up on a bike about 8.30 a.m. The pillant rider reported they alighted, walked to the shop and opened fire on the couple. Blood marks covered by dirt outside one of the doors to the restaurant, and a yellow caution tape told the tale of the tragedy when reporters arrived on the scene. One store operator at the plaza said he was sleeping when he heard the explosion, but thought the noise was from a bike. However, he said he realized it was something serious when he heard people saying that Mr. Green was shot. It is really sad, he said, describing the couple as good people who got along well with others. But persons at the scene were overheard, saying that the businessman was involved in a dispute over land elsewhere in the community. They theorized that the shooting may be linked to the dispute. You can see a whole community live on land and you want bulldozer them down? Where you go get? One person questioned. The couple reportedly moved to the house on the disputed property after their home in another section of the community was burnt down. The police have not commented on any possible motive. Two brothers shot dead in St. James. A motive is yet to be established for Friday night shooting dead of two brothers, 54-year-old laborer, Dean Scott Wade and 51-year-old shopkeeper, Dwight to Durami Wade in Rohampton, St. James. The two were at a bar owned and operated by Dwight when they were attacked about 9.30 p.m. The police were summoned and on their arrival, the younger brother Dwight was seen on the ground in a pool of blood with what appeared to be a gunshot wound to the head and upper body. Dean, the other brother, was found suffering from a gunshot wound to his abdomen. Citizens rushed him to the Connor Regional Hospital where he was pronounced dead on arrival. The police found four 9mm cartridges on the scene. The St. James police are investigating. Grange leads out point of tribute to DJ Arif Cooper. Minister of Culture, Gender Entertainment and Sport, Oliver Grange, has said tribute to disc jockey and music producer Arif Cooper following his death on Sunday. Cooper died suddenly while playing at a party early in the morning at the Police Officers Club in St. Andrew. In a statement, Green said she is deeply saddened by Cooper's passing. It is so sad that another of our outstanding personalities in the music industry has left us suddenly, and at such a relative young age, the minister said. We saw Afri following his famous father, Michael Ibo Cooper, a founder of the Third World Band, into music and making his own name here in Jamaica and on the international scene, where he entertained audiences in a number of United States cities and in Japan. Cooper's versatility was one that huge features of the man and was greatly admired by his colleagues in the music industry, especially those whose careers benefited from his talent and by his fans. It will be sorely missed, Green said. Fellow disc jockey Delano, a founder of Renaissance Disco Sound System, said Cooper's death is a big loss for the industry. We lost a great one. My condolences to his family, friends and supporters. He was doing what he loved by letting you dance, sing, and full joy life, Delano wrote on social media. Cooper is introduced to music at an early age and began DJing in the house parties in the early 90s. For more than two decades, he served at Fame FM as a broadcaster and DJ. 
Cooper is also known for creating the Guardian Angel Rhythm featuring T.O. Key and Tommy Chain and has also produced and written for his DJ Sean Paul and Penny Man. Sean Paul was among the many people expressing sadness at Cooper's passing. Jano still can't believe I woke up to this news. So much great musical memories shared with the legendary producer and DJ. Condolences to his family and friends. R.I.P. to my brother, he wrote. Another international dancer, Star Shaggy, also paid tribute on social media. So saddened by the news this morning of our friend, producer, DJ, and member of our culture, at Arif Cooper, condolences to his family. What good my brother, he wrote. Meanwhile, Grinch added, I express my deepest condolences to his family, his relatives, the RJR communications group with which he worked for many years, his friends and associates, to the music fraternity and to his fans and admirers everywhere. JCF investigating physical altercation between COP and JDF member. The Jamaica Constabulary Force JCF says it has launched an investigation into a physical altercation between a member of the Jamaica Defense Force and a COP. The incident, which has gone viral on social media reportedly, took place at a checkpoint in Denham Town, Kingston. In the video, the soldier can be seen shoving the cop several times. It is unclear who or what started the dispute. According to the JCF, Assistant Commissioner of Police in charge of Air Force Donovan Graham will meet with his senior JDF counterparts later on Monday to discuss the incident and bring the matter to a resolution. The incident does not reflect the current excellent working relationship and collaboration that exists between the JDF and the JCF. The communication arms of the constabulary said in a release, Joint operations between the two forces, particularly in the zones of special operations, the Joint Anti-Gang Task Force, and every other police division, take place continually. These joint operations are critical to our crime-fighting efforts and to ensure the safety and security of the Jamaican people, it added. The JCF highlighted that the organization remains committed to working together with the JDF to maintain law and order and to serve communities. The constabulary said the necessary steps will be taken to ensure a speedy resolution. Trial for a co-accused in Sikiana murder case fails to get off the ground. The trial of security guard Rowan Early B. Rose, who is charged in connection with the murder of social media influencer Anika Sikiana Thousand, failed to get off the ground on Monday. When the matter was called up in the St. James Circuit Court, the court told the court that the matter could not be dealt with. A mention date was later set by Justice Andrea Thomas for April 26. The 47-year-old security guard is charged with misprison of a felony. This means he is accused of knowing about the matter but failed to notify the authorities. Rose is currently on bail. His co-accused, Russian Patterson, was charged by the police with murder. Patterson, who remains in custody, is booked to reappear in court on Thursday, March 9. On October 21, Thousand's scantily clad body was retrieved from the sea in Reading between St. James and Hanover. Patterson is accused of strangling her to death. According to the police, Thousand had traveled from Kingston to Montego Bay, where she was picked up by Patterson at approximately 7.30 p.m. on October 20. During the evening, they visited a restaurant in Hanover and a guest house in St. James. At some point during the night, an argument reportedly developed between them which resulted in Patterson reportedly strangling Thousand and disposing of her body. NPTAG urges swift wage negotiations between the government and JTA. The National Parent Teaching Association of Jamaica, NPTAG, has expressed concern regarding the current, current wage negotiation between the government and the Jamaica Teachers Association, JTA, and is urging an amicable solution as soon as possible. On Friday, March 3rd, Placard bearing teachers at the St. Elizabeth Technical High School stayed sit in and accused the JTE of lobbying poorly on their behalf in wage negotiation with the government. On Monday, two additional schools in St. Elizabeth, BB Cook and Makati High, teachers were blocked to state sit ins, also pointing finger at the JTE. The NPTAG said that it is necessary for both parties to reach an amicable and urgent solution to avoid placing students at further risk given the already huge learning loss and the amount on COVID-19. The NPTAG acknowledges the need of our teachers to be adequately compensated in these financial difficult times for most Jamaicans. We acknowledge the great value of our teachers as they influence on the nation and its future growth through education of our children, 
the NPT AJ said in a release on Monday. What quality teacher system do we as parents, as a nation, want for our children? And how do we retain and attract quality teachers to achieve that objective? We must protect our children's future, and that is through quality education, it added. Minister of Finance and the Public Service Dr. Nigel Clark recently announced that $4.3 billion has been tucked under the budget for this fiscal year, which ends on March 31, an indication of the government's aim to settle wage disputes. But the police doctors and teachers are some of the major groups who have refused to sign off on the new compensation package until there is an improved offer from the government. The number of registered delegates, 583. The number of spoilt ballots, 4. Number of rejected ballots, 1. Number voting yes to accept, 227. Number voted no to reject 300 and forty-six, and the total ballots passed 574. Total number of ballots issued, 578. That concludes the results of the vote. The Union will dispatch a letter to the Minister of Finance and Public Service, highlighting the results of the spoken voice of the delegates of the UW had to provide counseling after a student found dead on campus. Counseling services will be provided to members of the Elsa Hall of Residents at the University of the West Indies UWI Mona campus for the passing of a student on the hall on Wednesday. In a news release, the university said that counselors and members of the chaplaincy unit have been deployed to engage the grief stricken students. The student was reportedly found dead on the hall on Wednesday morning, however, the identity of the student has not yet been revealed. The institution said that a similar counseling session is being organized with the Faculty of Humanities and Education. The University of West Indies Mona wishes to advise the public of the sudden passing of a male student on the Elsalea Hall of Residence. We are deeply saddened by this news and extend our condolences to the family, friends and hallmates of the deceased student, said the institution in a press release on Wednesday. The UWI added that upon being notified all protocols were activated and that the parents of the deceased and the police were contacted, and the body of the student has been removed. Former killed in St. Elizabeth gun attack A farm was shot dead by gunmen at Greenfield District in Halkova, St. Elizabeth, on Wednesday morning. Police have identified the deceased as 30-year-old Macian Dickens, otherwise called McCoy, and Fatman, a farmer from Jay Harbor District in the parish. It was reported that around 8.45 a.m., Dickens and four other individuals were sitting at the front of a house when they were approached by a man armed with a handgun. Police said the man opened fire hitting Dickens in the head and upper body. The gunman made his escape in a waiting white Nissan AD wagon motor car. The injured man was transported by the police to the Black River Hospital where he succumbed to his injuries. No motive has been established for the attack. So-called Pastor Mama found guilty of being a Klansman gangster. Stephanie Christie, otherwise called Mama, the sole female accused in the ranks of the Klansman gang and a so-called pastor has been found guilty of being a member of the notorious criminal organization. Chief Justice handed down the verdict on Wednesday afternoon. Christie said to be a top-tier member of the St. Catherine-based gang in a frivolous delivery on sworn statement had described herself as a businesswoman and entrepreneur who is known by many as a people person. She had claimed that her only more was screen for the elderly and the young people by getting them into schools. She told the court that she also spearheaded coming to sports day and a major get-together 
which was so recognized it attracted sponsorship from several big name companies. However, witness number two, a former gang member turned state witness, had asserted that Christie was the link between the police force and the gang and was the one to source legal representation whenever a gang member ran afoul of the law. Christie, it was said, bankroll legal fees from extortion monies. The trial judge on Wednesday, in referring to the recorded conversations which were entered into evidence, featured Christie in conversation with the witness where she spoke of a corrupt cop who fed her with information. It was consistent with the evidence of a police witness who said Christie had tried to bribe him. He said the evidence in the case showed, relatively, her role and function within the criminal organization. Christie, in maintaining her innocence, had said, I am not a part of any gang. I am a people person. I jump around and help everybody. She added that she knew gang leader Andre Blackman Brown because she grew up with him in Jones Avenue section of Spanish Town and attended the same high school, but emphasized that she was employed to a stationery store and a cereal making company in the time before her arrest. Christie had also denied knowing witness number one, who had testified that she was a high ranking member of the gang for longer than seven months. She went on further to point out that she only knew about six of them in the gang, arguing that if there was indeed a criminal organization, and if she ranked as highly in the structure, as the witness said, she would have known more than that members. I never go nowhere to commit no crime. That is mid law, she told the court stringently at the time. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell.